When I uh, process energy of what I become aware of, it's not the same as when I get on this camera realizing I am what I am. I'm not what it is. It is what it is, which is a false light vacuum. And what we learn through artificial systems or artificial builders tools, building false light libraries. And the difference between an eternal life system and an artificial life system as that relates to what? Record keeping management services, directories. Right. And so that's why we're here. Because it doesn't have any feelings. So now we're learning our lessons of what serves us and what doesn't serve us because it's always going to need an eternal source of electrical power. And that means we're giving consent to use our power to feed its system. And what does that do? Reduces our power output. To experience an eternal sun. These are the lessons learned. Because we have access to the open source records, the permanent records. So last night, their system popped up in my face. Take a look at this. And the name of the movie was called All My Sons. Sons, stars. That's how you can sort of decrypt it. All the stars, all the suns, all the neurons. All the units of continuous directed energy mirrors. It's all about mirrors. The mirrors were running. And so the name of that movie is called All My Sons. It was made in 1948. It's a black and white film with two actors that are dear to my heart. Uh, Edward G. Robinson and Burt Lancaster. And um, it, it really is. I shared it with Lisa Wolf, White Buffalo Woman. And said, if you want to watch a simple, beautiful movie that spells it out why we're all here, that movie made in 1948. And as soon as I woke up this morning and went to go look at the year that it was actually made, I sneezed. Because there isn't any time. Because it shows a date stamp in 1948. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know how that works. So it's real simple, and it reminds me of another story called by Anne Rand called Atlas Shrugged. So what we had here was Edward G. Robinson, who owned a factory during World War II. And the U.S. Air Force, see, he's on contract. He's making parts for bombers. Now, you can tie this to something that's going on today in the U.S. Congress. Boeing, same outfit, same club, a dead light club. Machines programming other machines. Yeah. Robots. Robotics. Tie that directly to United Aer the United Aerospace workers. No feelings. No feeling And reliable systems. Just like the example that I gave when I rolled up on that fire in 1974. Right? Obey the order. Throw that order in the dumpster fire. If I'd have followed that order, those people's houses would have burned down and that would have generated trauma as a future potential memory. So I countermanded that order because love is a law. Do no harm. Machines don't have any feelings to know a future potential memory, to prevent that future potential memory from happening because they have feelings for all standing at life forms. So in this particular case, we have Edward G. Robinson playing the owner of a factory. And, and the military is holding him under the fire. We need these parts. We need these bombers out because we're playing war games. The game needs an opponent. And all those, all those battery slaves that are making those parts, okay, are actually committing crimes by using their energy to build parts to participate in the war game. Right. But he's thinking, well, I'm going to go out of business if I don't get these parts out. So I got to make a decision. Do I take the risk factor? S separation, degrees of distance. The variables, the risk factor. If I ship those parts out, right, I maintain my income, the input flow, the return rate of flow. So what ends up happening is, is that his business partner said, listen, Joe, we cannot do this. These parts are going into these 
these bombers. And if those planes go down, we're killing them, knowing that the risk factor, that could happen to them. I'm not going to sign off on this. Joe says, what do you want me to do? I'll have to shut my factory down. I spent 40 years of my life building this factory to make a lot of money and employ all these people as battery operated slaves to play war games. He was stuck between a rock and a hard place. So he made a decision, ship him. So the beginning of the movie starts where Edward G. Robbins' business partner is in prison. He took the rap for the business decision that Edward G. Robinson made. And when it comes full circle at the end, he realized he killed his own son. One of his sons was on one of those bombers and he wrote a letter. Now Edward Gene Robinson has to face himself like in Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, step one. And how this relates to forgiveness. Forgiveness and forgetting. And forgiving myself, which is forgiving myself, which is healing me, which is healing you because I'm forgiving you. Now we experience being one. That's what love is. That's an eternal son from which all the other sons, as in all the sons, are made manifest into creation. So we're all a reflection of the same son, because you can't escape the first son, the first one, the silver and gold-mated one, the eternal son of all creation, the one we serve. So I shared that little movie with, uh, with Lisa Wolf and a few other friends of mine, Um, Because you see how this works with war machines, false light vacuum, knowing one from the other, the true still point of being calm and experience being totally loved and totally relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a beautiful day. We love you all. Restore the power. Restore the electrical power so we're not experiencing any nuclear decay. Muave.